What is up guys, I'm Francis the Instructor back again with another driving test route video with TDS TV and this time I'm in Tolworth. <laughs> If you're thinking about taking your driving test in Tolworth, might open your eyes a little bit. So, what's first? You're going to meet the examiner inside the driving test centre and he'll check your driving licence. Then, you'll lead him out to your car, which is parked in one of the bays outside the driving test centre. Top tip, park with your boot facing the wall, because when you first get in the car with the examiner, you want to drive forwards out of the bay and not have to reverse into the street. That's more difficult than it needs to be. On the way to your car, the examiner is going to ask you a tell me question, a vehicle safety question, like how do you adjust the headrest or what's your minimum tire tread depth make sure you learn these questions there's only 14 of them so it's not too difficult then you're going to get in the car with your driving examiner be confident remember you've practiced hard for this show them what you're made of don't think of it as a test all it is is a confirmation of your ability what's the stuff they're going to get you to do take some corners take a roundabout it's not going to be too hard the examiner is going to say drive on when you're ready you'll either be following a sat nav or following road signs in this case i'm going to be following a sat nav around one of tolworth's real driving tests routes let's go so prepare observe and take your time with this we're not in a massive hurry when you're pulling away from a parking space there's no rush especially as it's the beginning of your driving test go nice and slow take real care if you have to turn left out of the driving test center you're going to turn left onto Ewell Road which is busy so take left then take the third left cheers Tom Tom and luckily I've got a really long gap in the traffic on my right, which is lucky. Sometimes you're not that privileged. Sometimes you're not that lucky and you don't have such a massive gap. After if you do, yards, turn left. if you do, great. But if you don't take your time, okay. I'm taking my time here. It's the beginning of my driving test. I might feel a little bit nervous, but that's okay. That's my body telling me that I'm ready. There's no need for nerves to destroy your driving test. I'm planning well ahead as well. The Tom Tom's told me to turn left soon. So I know that I'm gonna get into the left lane early and plan that junction, I've spotted it now. So, mirrors, signal, when? About six to eight car lengths Turn back left. from the junction, keeping an eye on that guy, that kid with his scoot. I knew he was gonna do that. <laughs> he did not even look at all. So, what's the speed limit here? 20 miles an hour, if you miss the sign. The problem with road signs and speed limit signs is they're at the beginning of junctions. When you're thinking about turning or not hitting kids on scooters. So here, the examiner might ask you to pull up on the left. Okay, mirror, signal, take your time with this, do it in stages, don't rush anything. Parking up nice and smoothly, handbrake neutral, cancel the signal, breathe. Break your exam down into stages. Every time the examiner pulls you over, that's one stage done. They're gonna pull you over about five or six times as well. So in half an hour, that's breaking your exam down into nice seven minute manageable chunks. Don't think of it as doing a half an hour of driving, which is a lot to tackle all in one go. Think of it as, ah, oh, just doing a five minute drive. Right, done. <sighs> Next, the examiner's gonna ask you to pull away when you're ready. So, okay, great, I'm ready. If you're not ready, take a sip of water, compose yourself and prepare. Observe, signal, handbrake. Don't rush your driving test. Your driving test is a After test of... yards, cross the roundabout and take the third exit. Your driving test is a test of how safe and in control of the car you are. All I'm proving is that I'm safe on the road and I'm in control of the car. Too many people rush their driving test and fail... Cross the roundabout and take the third exit. Because they're rushing. Okay, I can see on the sat now that's a right turn. Check into my right nice and early. This one's not a very hard roundabout. No excuses for getting this one wrong. There's my gap, I'm ready, I'm setting off. One, two, three. Check in the mirror before I leave the roundabout. It might sound basic, but hey, do you know what? The driving test is basic. I don't care how good a driver you are. If I was doing a driving test, I'd be counting the exits as I go around. Make sure I take the right one. Although if you take the wrong exit on a driving test, it's not a big deal. You are not gonna get penalized for going the wrong way. So if something is a little bit too difficult to manage, like the third exit had a massive something going on in it, you might want to take the second exit and say, whoops, went the wrong way there, soz. Okay, this cyclist is wide out in the road. Is this a safe time to overtake the cyclist? Remember your driving test is a test of how safe you are. 
checking my mirrors a few times to make sure there's nothing else overtaking me as I overtake the park DPD van. Was it necessary to indicate there? I see far too many people indicating to overtake when it's not necessary. If I'd have signaled there, it would have looked like I was turning right. There was a junction right there. And I'm staying behind this cyclist because there's no safe place to overtake yet. I know the speed limit's 30 miles an hour on this road. I'm doing 18, but it's not safe to overtake yet. The cyclist is too far out into the middle of the road. They're the lead road user, so I'm gonna go at their speed. I'm not in a rush. I'm proving I'm safe and in control. Done, both of those things ticked. Right, now planning ahead, planning well ahead. It's gonna get busy over here. We're going through Surbiton, so. After 200 yards, turn right, then take the second right. Cheers, Tom. I'm checking out that zebra crossing. Looked like a couple of pedestrians were getting closer there, so I slowed right down just in case. I'd rather stop for a zebra crossing that no one uses than carry on over a zebra crossing that someone crosses at because that is a fail. Turn right, then take the second right. A cyclist was literally riding in the road the whole way down. But I'm going to turn right here. And the first thing you need to notice is we're turning right on a crossroads, which means any oncoming traffic gets to go first. If this was a box junction with a yellow box on it, because I'm turning right and my exit's clear, I'm going to go into it and stop at my normal place to turn right. Okay, cool. 20 miles an hour, saw that on the floor. Can see all of the reminders and the repeater signs. yards, turn right. No excuse for speeding at all around here. If the area is 20 miles an hour, it's very clearly signed with regular repeater signs. Repeater signs are those small speed limit signs that repeat the speed limit. If it's 30 miles an hour, you won't generally see those. But at 20, we're definitely gonna see repeater signs regularly posted all over the road and on the floor, there it is. So, ready to turn right. I'm always keeping an eye on my sat nav as well because I don't wanna forget where I'm going. Also, I want an early indication of what I'm gonna do next. Turning right, checking my mirror, no motorbikes, cyclists, other cars overtaking me because I'm going at 20 miles an hour and most people don't go at 20 miles an hour. They'll probably try and overtake you. So regular mirror checks, especially if you're turning, is essential. Meeting situation, let this guy go first because I'm nice like that and I'm on a driving test. Yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. Okay, this roundabout can be a little bit busy. So I'm going to take care when I approach it. I'm gonna make sure I don't approach it too fast. You're not gonna get any points for speeding around your driving test, especially not in Tolworth. It's quite busy at times. So mirrors and signal, pre preparing nice and early. Slowing right down, taking a double, triple check. One, two, mirror, signal, and leave the roundabout. I'm gonna cancel it before people think I'm turning into the station. And here, if you're going down this road on your driving test, make sure you keep your eyes peeled. Really, really peeled. Because, have a look at how much of the pavement that we can see. Nothing, literally nothing. And the zebra crossing is quite hidden as well. I'm um, ready to stop. Nope, there's nothing coming, so I'm gonna carry on. I was slowing down there. I didn't need to stop for anything, but I was taking precautions just in case. There's no point failing your driving test because you're trying to rush through it. We are not late for work. There we go. Turn left, this guy's using it. Turn right. Before I slow down, I check my mirror, made sure there's nothing behind me as well. The examiner is loving this so far. I'm going to make sure that pedestrian is all the way across the road before I carry on. And then checking left and right, make sure there's no cyclists or motorbikes overtaking as I set off. Super safe. There's nothing that's going to help me fail my driving test today. Trust me. I'm in the right mindset. I'm not rushing. I'm taking my time. Right. Paying attention to the sat nav so I can get early indications of where I'm going next helps you plan ahead, which is really important. Okay, back to first gear for the giveaway line. No rushing, checking both ways at least twice. What's going on here? Is this guy gonna make me stop? Yep. Because I was anticipating that. I know you've done planning ahead and anticipation on your driving lessons if you're planning on taking a driving test. So that's the name of the game. If you're planning ahead, you're going to have early indication of what's happening next, or at least what might happen next. I thought that guy might stop me, so I was ready for it. And then when he did, it wasn't too much of a surprise. Turn right. Turning right, sitting next to the center line of the road. I'm nice and neat. I'm in my position. I'm not sloppy. I'm trying to be really accurate here as well because the examiner can't ask me any questions. They can't ask you, oh, did you know that you should have been next to that center line? They'll just assume that you didn't know and mark it down. Okay, what about this road? What are we thinking here? I'm thinking it's not too wide. 
it's quite narrow. So as soon as I'm on this road, I'm expecting meeting situations. I'm expecting a car to come towards me so that I can be prepared for that. What else do you think is going to happen here? Pull up on the left, please, Francis. No problem, Mr. Examiner. Might have said pull up on the left in a safe place. Hope you know what that means. If you're taking a driving test, you should know what that means. But I'm going to reverse here a little bit further away from that Vauxhall Corsa. If the examiner asks for a safe place, they're asking for a proper parking space. So don't park on yellow lines, you can't park on red lines, and you can't park across dropped curbs, which is what you have across someone's driveway. So if they ask for a safe space, make sure that you can find one. If you can't find one, don't just pull up anywhere. You can talk to your examiner, they're human. So just say, hey, do you want me to pull up there? Uh, do you mean on that yellow line? They'll respond as well and help you out. So, Francis, what I'd like you to do next is move off from here and reverse part back into this position, keeping reasonably close to the curb and finish within two car lengths of the car in front. Woo! The examiner's just asked me to do some parallel parking. Right, I don't need to get stressed out here. I've practiced this a hundred times with my driving instructor. So, I'm not gonna rush. I'm not gonna set off straight away. I'm gonna plan this out. I'm gonna think about my reference points. Right, back of the car, back passenger window. What's the next one? door handle, triangle, pizza, whatever your reference points are, just make sure you plot them out in your head. How fast are you going to move? Really slowly. How fast am I going to steer? Same speed as the car. Okay, great. Now I've got my manoeuvre planned out. Now I can execute it. We're not in a hurry. Most people rush manoeuvres and get something wrong. This is the one chance that you've got. It's not like when you're with your driving instructor, you have 101 chances to get this right because your instructor's really patient and will go over it with you and chat about it and correct it with you. But with your examiner, there's no talking, there's no chatting about it. You get one chance and one chance only. So take your time. Look how slowly I'm moving. I'm moving so slowly. Making sure I keep up that good observation. What they're marking you on, on your driving test, on your maneuvers is control and observation. So as long as my car's in control and I'm observing correctly, I'm gonna pass, just like that. If you mess up the maneuver a little bit, no drama. Who's gonna care? I'll tell you what they think. If you are safe and in control of the car, you can get good at parking in your own time. As long as you're not going to hit people or do anything dangerous, you're in control and you're safe, hey, go and get good at parallel parking in your own time, it's fine. Just be in control of the car and observe properly. I know, if you're taking driving lessons, you will have had your instructor say, mirrors, 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 check your mirrors, you forgot that mirror. It's really annoying. I tell people all day long, you forgot that mirror, and it's like, oh my God, yeah, I forgot that mirror. It's frustrating, but we say it for a reason. It's going to get you to pass your driving test and it's going to make you a safe driver. So let's see again ahead what's happening. As soon as you've finished your maneuver and you're done, make sure that the, the the road, turn right. make sure that you then switch back into driving mode, planning well ahead. In maneuvers, you don't have to plan well ahead. You have to stay in control and be observing around. But now we're driving, we're planning well ahead again. What's happening on this road? Great, I'm there. And here's the top tip. Don't be thinking about what happened on that maneuver now. It's too late, whatever happened has happened. You're gonna talk about it with your examiner as soon as the test is finished. So don't waste time now thinking about what happened on the maneuver. There's no point because you can't change it. Now, if you're thinking, oh my God, did I actually- At the end of the road, turn left. Did I do my one turn left? Did I park well enough? Was I too far? It doesn't matter, stop thinking about it because now you're distracting yourself from what's ahead and that's what's important. Cyclist, she should have stopped really. No problem, I'm on my driving test, I'm not being aggressive and I'm not late. So, what's next? Mirror, signal, left. position, speed. Look, look right, look left. So I didn't stop at that giveaway line. This is quite a common thing I hear from people who take lessons with their parents. You have to stop at every giveaway line, that's incorrect. You're gonna get marked down for stopping at every single giveaway line. Think about it like this. What's the car behind you thinking? What's the car behind you expecting you to do? If there's nothing coming and they can see that there's nothing coming, they'll be expecting you to go. So if you stop, it's gonna catch them off guard and potentially they'll crash into you if they're not concentrating properly. So when I get to a giveaway line, if there's nothing coming, I'm gonna keep going. And the only way I can do that is by crawling up to it. If you're approaching the giveaway line then second gear, 10 miles an hour, it's not enough time to look right and left and make a safe decision. After 200 yards, turn right. <laughs> I didn't actually know what test route this was taking me on before when I started this video. I know now we're going to a dual carriageway. So if you're taking your driving test in Tolworth, you need to be good at fast roads. 
there are some dual carriageways that you are very likely to drive on on your driving test. So if you're not confident driving at a speed of 50 miles an hour, go back to your driving instructor and make sure you get confident at driving at 50 miles an hour. You might say to yourself, oh, I think I can do it. Oh, maybe I can do it. But when you're on your driving test, it's a really lonely place. You're gonna question yourself. You're gonna doubt what you're doing. You need to have full confidence in your ability. And by having full confidence, you're gonna pass your driving test because you can't ask for help. Usually on driving lessons, you say, oh, did I do that right? You ask After for reassurance. After yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. Right, cool. But on your driving test, you can't. You have to be fully confident. And while you're sitting there asking yourself, am I getting this right? Do I, should, I, should I have done that? Should I have done this? You're left not concentrating and take the first exit. on what's coming up ahead and you're making more mistakes. So, roundabout first exit. I'm actually going into first gear for that one because I'm on a driving test and I want to take a good second observation look. It was quite a built up area, so I couldn't really see very well around that corner. And take the first exit, then first turn exit. right. Okay, cool. Again, going nice and slow over that roundabout. I could see more, so turn I went a bit right. faster. Turn right. Okay, it's not really a right turn. If you've seen any of my previous videos, especially the test street ones, you'll know that the tom-toms sometimes give misleading information. So I needed to assess that road myself. I couldn't rely on the tom-tom there to give me full guidance. The tom-tom said, turn right. There was no right turn. So if I signaled there, I would have got marked down for incorrect signal. So Francis, pull up on the left in a safe place. Uh, can I park on the driveways? No, you can't park on the driveways. I want a safe place. It's okay to have that kind of conversation with your driving examiner. So, now I've parked in a safe place. What are they gonna to say to me next? Okay, I've done my maneuver. Drive on when you're ready. The examiner's gonna pull you over five or six times and this is your opportunity. <sighs> take a break, take a deep breath, have a sip of water, compartmentalize that last section and now move on with the next five minutes. You're gonna pull over on your driving test a lot more than I'm pulling over. So use it to break your driving test down. Have a bottle of water with you on your driving test. Make sure that you're ready and you're hydrated and you've got something there to just give you that reset. The reset's so important. Half an hour builds up on your head and it can be really, really intimidating. If you've got that five minute reset, go again. Five minute reset, go again. It's gonna make it so much easier. Roads like this is why Tolworth's a dream. Tolworth's a dream, look at this. How can you get this bit wrong? Really nice. There's some hard bits in Tolworth through Surbiton, the dual carriageway, if you're not good at it. Turn right, then take the third left. Great, cycle safety also really important. I've mentioned it before, I've mentioned it 100 times, I will mention it again. Cycle safety is super important. I didn't feel like I had enough room there to get around the cyclist safely, so I waited. <laughs> I waited, that's all you need to do. We're not in a hurry, we're just driving safely. So if you don't have, or even if you're not sure, if, it, right, if you don't think you've got left. enough room, just wait just wait and pass later. So we're turning right here, moving into my right turn lane, being really neat and tidy, really neat and tidy, because I want to show the examiner I know what I'm doing. Not rushing, just neat and tidy, in control and safe. That's what we're trying to prove. So. After 300 yards, turn left. Okay, cool. 300 yards, turn left, no problem. I can see here we've got some road signs up ahead. If you miss road signs and you're not very good at spotting road signs, you're gonna have quite a hard driving test. I spotted that road sign really early, so I knew what was coming next. So I've got a much easier time because I can plan well ahead. The examiner's not gonna tell you about road signs. If a road sign tells you to go somewhere, the examiner won't tell you. You've got to spot that sign and deal with it properly. Turning left, no problemo, Tom Tom. Mm -mm -mm. Nice and clear. Brilliant. What's that road sign? Really easy to miss it, especially if I'm thinking about what's coming up down the road. Coming up down the road, up down, 40 miles an hour. So, prove that I've spotted that sign. The only way I can prove it is by doing it. The examiner's not gonna say, do you spot that 40 sign, Francis? Because then I'm gonna go, oh yeah, of course I spotted it. No, I didn't. So, I'm just gonna speed up to a speed of even if I don't feel like 40 miles an hour safe, push past 30, get into fourth gear, then I know that you've seen it. Check in the mirror there, because I'm watching the road markings nice and early. If there's a car coming, what do you think you would do here? Would you have to hold back? I'd want to be quite, what's the opposite of aggressive? I'd want to do that, <laughs> be submissive, not quite submissive, but try and help other people After because- 100 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. I'd want to try and help other people because then that gives me the opportunity to take control. Take control of the situation. If I try and push through that bridge and the other person doesn't help me, I've lost control of my driving test there. Okay, so first 
exit at the roundabout. Nice and easy. And this is where it's going to get a bit fast, so be ready. Being fast is not scary. If a road is faster, it's going to be wider. If a road is faster, it's not going to have corners. We're not going to have to turn left or right on 50 miles an hour roads. There's my gap on it. Checking to the right. Mm -mm -mm. Gap on it. Let's go. So don't be scared of the faster roads. The faster roads are a dream. Look at what we're doing here. We're just following basically a lane. How hard is that? If you can drive, you can do this. 35 miles an hour, following the car in front. You might be tempted to go for the overtake. Don't go for the overtake. Use this to help you keep at a good speed. If the car in front's not doing 40, great. If the car in front though is doing something like 30 miles an hour, you will need to overtake it on your driving test because we need to show that we're making progress. So if the car in front's doing some stupid speed, then go for the overtake. But if they're a few miles an hour under, wow, thank you so much because now you're helping me keep me at a good speed. I just have to follow the leader and drive on. What's happening ahead? You can see a red light in the distance. I'm gonna start slowing down really early. A couple of reasons why that's important. The examiner now knows that I've got it covered and it makes me have a smooth brake. The examiner's gonna appreciate that so much. Braking smoothly opposed to braking harshly. Imagine the examiner does seven, eight driving tests every single day. If six of those driving tests break harshly and you're the one guy or girl that breaks really smoothly and gives this examiner a super smooth ride, they're gonna love you. Right, green light, check mirrors. No motorbikes, no cyclists coming past me. That's an important check, don't miss that one out, guys. Keeping my two seconds gap from the car in front. If you don't know how to count two seconds, then when the vehicle in front passes something stationary, count to two. If you get there first, you're too close. So, car in front passing the lamppost, one second, two second, perfect. Two second gap right there. Theory test question, in rain, what is your time distance to the car in front? Four seconds. Snow and ice? Ten seconds. Cool. So, After 400 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit. The then the keep left. <laughs> the theory test stuff isn't just for, for fun, just to, to hassle you because you want to go and take your driving test, but you can't because you haven't passed your theory test. It's not just there for... The for annoyance and take the second exit. it's stuff that then you need to know if you don't know it you're going to get stuff on your driving test wrong if you're not implementing the stuff from your theory test you're going to fail your driving test so make sure that you don't just pass your theory test you actually remember it and implement all of the stuff that you've learned too oh nice confident acceleration that's another good tip actually don't accelerate oh, slowly yards. 50 miles an hour, accelerate with confidence. It makes you feel confident, it makes you feel good. Also, it's gonna make the examiner feel like you're a good driver, you're a confident driver. If you're accelerating super slowly everywhere, even on the really fast roads, it's gonna make you look like a really annoying, boring driver. You might think that's more safe, but all the cars behind you are gonna get annoyed. You're gonna get overtaken all the time. You're not the kind of person that really we want on the road. So, are you gonna fail your driving test? Probably. If you know Tollworth, then you should do. If you're taking a driving test here, then you know what's coming up next. Uh-oh, <laughs> hook roundabout? Yeah, hook roundabout's coming up next. I would recommend learning and practicing on hook roundabout and the Tollworth Junction A3 roundabout a lot. Not just once or twice, a lot, because there's so many ways that it can be different. If you practice it twice, if you practice it 10 times, you might practice it another 10 times and have 10 more different situations. Okay, luckily we're only going left first exit on the roundabout, but there's still so many opportunities to get that wrong. 30 miles an hour speed sign. I'm not gonna wait till I get past the 30 mile an hour speed sign to slow down. I'm gonna slow down to 30 before I hit that sign. That's super important. Left on the roundabout and take the first exit. No problem, I got this. So, taking it really easy. Can I stop on a zebra crossing? Nope. So I'm gonna make sure that I can either get across it after the red car's gone or wait behind it. Right, red car's gone. Now I'm not thinking about going, I'm just thinking about repositioning. I'm gonna be super patient and I'm only gonna go when I've got a really good gap like that one. If you miss a gap, what's gonna happen? You're gonna get hesitation, but if you're trying to rush it and go too fast and you go into a gap and you make another car slow down, you're gonna fail your whole driving test. This is so important, guys. Just don't rush your driving test. Take your time. 
take your time. And if you're hesitating loads and loads and loads, then you're probably in need of some more practice. If you're hesitating loads at all of the roundabouts and your examiner or your instructor is saying, stop hesitating so much, then you probably just need more practice at spotting good gaps. But don't go the complete other way and start taking mental gaps like you're a crazy boy racer because boy racers won't get a driving license driving like that. Trust me. 300 yards turn right. Okay, not too hard. This one though, you want to practice this once or twice. Make sure that you're in the correct position in the box. I'm going to signal nice and early so I can slow down and make sure that I'm positioned correctly. If there's cars oncoming, I'm going to make sure that I'm fully in the box when I stop. Why is that important? Because if you're not fully in the box and you're hanging out, if your back's hanging out of the box, you're in a really dangerous position. Cars coming past, you have to swerve around you. If you get one car that's not really concentrating on the phone or something, then they're gonna crash into you. So make sure that when you stop in right turn boxes, you're properly positioned. Okay, I'm taking this bump nice and square one because it gives me a nice, easy, smooth ride. And I'm nearly back at the at driving the test the center. Road, turn right, then take the second. I know I'm nearly back at the driving test centre because I know the routes around here. I know the roads around here because I've practiced. You're going to have practiced as well if you're doing your driving test here. So I know, ah, the driving test centre is just around the corner. Stop thinking about it though. Make sure that you're driving properly until the examiner asks you to turn your car turn off. Right, then take the second right. Okay, that's it. Two more corners and you're done. But don't think about it give the last two corners as much effort and care and control as the first two corners, the second two corners and the third two corners. While you're here at the red lights as well, you can put the handbrake on, you can keep the handbrake off. I've got my foot on the foot brake though, you must have a brake on and I'm not going to go to sleep now. I'm going to make sure that I'm planning ahead because something's going to happen once the lights turn green and I don't want to have the green light come on and think, oh, go, 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 because then I'm going to make a mistake because I'm rushing. So, lights are red, what's going to happen next? Check my mirrors to make sure there's no cyclists or motorbikes coming past me at the same time and think about how you're gonna use the clutch. Stalling is the most common mistake on a driving test and there's no need for it. It's because you got caught out and you were rushing. So I thought about how I was gonna use the clutch nice and gently, a little bit of gas to push me forward. Smooth, really smooth. So I'm nearly there, I'm nearly back at the driving test center and your heart's gonna be racing now. It's gonna be racing so hard because you know that you're nearly back and you're gonna get the pass or fail. This is literally gonna decide then whether you get a pink license today left. right what's this guy doing is he gonna cross no he's waiting for me great cheers thank you keep it in second gear check my mirror a couple of times then the examiner's gonna say right drive just drive forward into one of these bays if it's a second maneuver they're not asking you to do another maneuver so if you don't get into the bay don't worry about it just park safely under control and stop the car handbrake neutral Next, the examiner's gonna say, right, I'm pleased to tell you that you passed your driving test. Oh my God, <gasps> don't cry, super cringe. And if you fail, again, don't cry. The examiner's gonna tell you why you didn't pass, so make sure that you take all of the feedback on board so that you can improve for next time. If your instructor's here as well, let them listen to the feedback as well, because then they can help you improve on whatever you did. It might have just been nerves, it might have been you didn't understand the situation that happened to you. Whatever it was, you can improve on it for next time never give up on your driving test. To actually have done a driving test, you won. You've achieved something huge. Even if you didn't get the result that you wanted to get, and you missed it by something small, or even if you missed it by something big, it doesn't matter. Go again, because the next time you might get the result you wanted. And remember, it's a driving license for life. So this small, tiny, half hour, stressful situation, don't worry about it. Do it, everyone's had to do it. Everybody knows someone really, really, really stupid who's got a driving license. If they can do it, you can do it. Guys, hope you found that video helpful. This is Toe Off Driving Test Center. Any other questions, comment below. I read through all the comments and I'll be commenting back with you guys to give you all the help you need to pass your driving test. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.